Guys, I'm down here on St Audrey's Beach. Hard to believe it, I forgot my head torch. I've also bought two wrong sections for two rods. So instead of my 43 rods, I'm down to two, but result here, look at this guys. Fabulous fire I've got going. Just one lighter, a piece of bait paper, and some very, very dry wood. So great fire going. Really, all I need to do is catch a fish and see if I can actually cook it on there for you. That's what I'm aiming to do. It's going to be a cracking fire. A crackling, a cracking fire. If I don't set my hair alight. <laughs> oh, no. That's the moustache gone. <laughs> there it is anyway. Great fire. I've got plenty of other wood here left over. And there's plenty along the beach. I've got out there mackerel, a mackerel and lug rack of the two because I'm hoping to try and catch a dogfish. And if I do, I'm going to try and skin it. Now, whether I'm going to do it tonight or leave it till tomorrow, I don't know. I might actually leave it till tomorrow because this fire seems a bit too good to, uh, to miss out on. They give a shocking storm coming in tomorrow, so it's not too, not too great. I should give it a go anyway, see if I get a dogfish. But because they have a bit of a build up of ammonia, I might actually just leave it until the morning, you know, and give it a go then. Anyway, look at my fire. It's going. I'm on high tide. It's all looking good. I just need that one bite. Well, the thing is, guys, I didn't get that one bite, did I? I've got to come back the next day. I was pretty disappointed because even though they got bad weather coming in, I thought I can't fail at night. So here I am again, starting up where I left off. I made a nice circle of stones there. And down in Somerset where I am, there's not a shortage of stones. I've got some more old bait paper left off, left over there. But as you can see, I've also got some little bit of kindling with that I put in my knapsack. And that's always a good banker if you're going down doing a beach fire because the salt water does tend to soak up into the wood. If you take a little bit of extra kindling, totally dry wood with you, I find that helps really get the base of the fire going first and then that dries out the salt water work because don't forget there's always a constant spray of salt water coming up a mist coming across the beach there so a coating of salt on the wood does often make it a little bit harder anyway a lot of smoke going there they say there is no smoke without fire it doesn't hurt to do a little blowing there and i like to keep one gap open with the stones towards the wind and there you can see paid off big time by leaving that gap towards the wind, it has a last call. I've got a good fire next to it, a good stash of wood. So what I do before I light a fire, just a tip here, go and get plenty of dry wood first. I always get more wood than I am going to need for the start of the fire. Because too many times people get the fire going, I think, great, they start blowing it. What happens? It starts dwindling, they look around, oh, oh I need some more wood and they haven't got a stash. Get yourself enough for two or three burns, what I call it. Dump it all close to the fire and larger logs can be dried out close to it. Okay, here is the bait. It is mackerel and lug wrap. As I said, I used last night. The, uh, how can I describe this? The lug worm, they come out of the mud. They, they're dug out of the mud. These ones are dead, they're frozen and they're wrapped in paper, but I get some mackerel, as you can see, up the bait, up that line first. That's just the first bait. Let me unwind the hook, I'll show you. There's the mackerel, which you pull down. Um, dogfish do love mackerel. That's really why I'm using this as bait. Ordinarily, I'll be using squid. This time, I'll be using mackerel. And I bind the two baits together using elasticated bait thread. Now, this is a very fine elastic, and I push the bottom hook up and whip around and around and around with this elastic. Now it sort of cuts into the meat of that uh, bait, but that makes it a nice tight bundle to cast out and present to the fish. I do a half hitch, snap it off, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that's that job done. Then, simple question, on the beach, check your drags, check the fire. Now notice how that fire's burning down now, snap up, and load up so it doesn't burn out. You want to get a good base of embers there. So always try and get a good backup. The second hook I can put 
right through the top of the meat of the bait so I've got two hooks okay so there's a, a sliding hook it's called a pulley panel rig that I clip onto uh, a special clip by the lead to keep it all streamlined behind the lead when I cast out now this is important for those of you who may be thinking of going on a beach trip trying to catch a fish kill it cook it that type of thing and look here there's two semicircles of water but there's also a little peninsula a shingle that goes out about another 12 feet that does not get the waves washing over it the waves split either side of this shingle here comes a wave look at this nasty big wave it could go about waist high uh oh no it comes to my ankles but behind me it washes well up so there there's a little spot that gets me an extra 15 or 20 feet of casting out goes the bait and then it's the usual fisherman's waiting game. Well, I didn't have long to wait. Maybe, I don't know, about an hour because the tide is coming in, that means it's pushing me further and further up the beach, so make sure when you do light a fire, that it's actually above the high tide line. And it can be snaggy down there, as you've seen by the stones. So I crank this fish in as hard as I can. I'm pretty sure there's one on there. Yeehaw, guys. There is the target. There is the dinner bell. It is a nice big dogfish. This is what I intend, showing you how to clean, skin, and cook this fish survival style on the beach and you can see he was really after nailing that piece of mackerel now there's a tip for you guys how to unhook a dogfish bend the tail around to the head and the neck Otherwise, that rust skin will go around the back of your hand and scratch it. That way you can get hold of the hook, pop the hook out, nice and simple, and then unwrap the tail. Now, you're going to have to dispatch this. Those of you with a squeamish nature, look away now. But if you are a true survivalist, you realise that human beings do actually kill things. Get a big rock, put another rock underneath it. That one was hot. And whap, 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 whap. Maybe one for luck. Whap. That fish is absolutely totally stone dead and ready for preparation. Ah. Well. Oh, guys, I've got my I've got my fish, that's the main thing. I got nothing last night. So I've actually come down in the morning, same state of tide, it's a little bit bigger. So I've got to go a little bit further up to get the drier wood. But I've got the fire going, and most important, I've got myself a dogfish. Okay, I'm only using a small camera with all this rain and storms. Now here's the fish, upside down, I'm going to gut it. I'm going to go in through the vent here and split it up the stomach like this. Always cut away from it, use a sharp knife, just like this. See that? Dead easy to split apart. Okay, liver, guts, everything is in there. Grab it at the top end. Pull it all out. All those guts. God. Not for the squeamish, but then if you're surviving on a beach and you're going to eat your catch, don't be squeamish. Cut that off. This goes back into the sea. I'm going to actually hang on to that for bait. So I've got it all, all clean. I'm just going to do a quick wash in the sea and then I'm going to start skinning it. Okay, I've washed it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these fins off just here, just like this. Very, very rough skin here. I'm gonna cut these off, we don't use a, the belly cavity. It just helps the skin, I'm gonna cut this one off as well. And I wanna cut it nice and neat, and cut the other dorsal fin off. This is for skinning. You can do it different, there's lots of different ways to do it, this is just the way I do it. I then, up here, Gonna make a cut around, just into the skin. That's very tough at the top, you just gotta nick it. Watch what you're doing with a sharp knife. 
cut that around. Just like this. That's it. Then what I do is I split all the way down here at the back, just like this. Run the knife down, and it comes out nice. And from here, I don't go below the tail, I go, I go in just there. Then, just watch your fingers, gradually ease the knife away from you. You're basically joining the splits up. Hoping you can hear this, guys, you're gonna turn it over. Just that one to do there, that join from there to there is only about four or five inches. That's it. That one's already cleaned. And then the tricky bit, just here, I'm going to try and just nick that skin away, the very, very rough skin. Just enough to allow me to get a bit of a grip. Two little cuts. I'm going to put this down and do it, guys. There we go. Cut there. Here comes the rain. Great, just when I didn't need it. Now you can run the knife all the way down like this. Just easing that rough skin away. Or you can do this. Get yourself a pair of pliers. Like this. Get a hold of that grip just here. And just gradually roll the pliers around until you hear the skin. Now hold it tight. You can see that skin hopefully. This is really difficult to film. And you're at the same. There we go. Look how the skin's coming away. Oh, I'm hoping you people can see this. I'm doing this with a tiny little camera. There's the skin. I'm going to dry that and show you. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Look how clean that comes. All the way to the end. Cut it off. I put the skin over here. I'm going to cut this just across there. Now you'll hear that snap, hopefully. You don't, you don't, because the sea's pounding in here. Now that's cartilage in the middle of there, it's not bone. And then you get the other end. How easy is this, folks? That's it. Great piece of meat there. One central bone. And to get that wrapped in the silver foil on the fire, I'm going to cut it in two. Pop, get through that, that cartilage there. You can see the centre cartilage with the meat. Hopefully you can see it anyway. Turn that off. Job done. There we go, two lovely bits of meat there. Perfect. That's going to keep me going all day. The skin is used as sandpaper. I'll try and dry this off for you and show you. Meanwhile, the head and the tail, guts, all go back in the sea, all gets eaten. There's a nice piece of skin, you can see it's come off, but this is very smooth one way and very rough the other. What I do on my knapsack, I bring a nice large piece of baking foil, tin foil, whatever you call it, cooking foil, shiny one side, matte on the other. I can then make, assuming I catch a big fish, I can wrap it in there if I catch a fish like a dogfish, I can actually split it in half like this, and then I've got my two I call them fillets, whole body sections there that I can wrap up in the silver foil. Now you can do all the chefy stuff, you can put pepper in there, you can put lemon in there, but I like to make a little parcel and pinch the ends over. I don't crush it too tight. I like to leave a bit of space in there. And as you can see, it's almost like a Christmas cracker really. I roll it up. Now here's the most important thing is when you put it on the fire, don't put it on top of the flames. You want to put it on the ash slightly to the side because you're going to cook it. You do not want to cremate it. So I rake those embers out. It's getting ready for tummy time. And there is the skin being dried out, which you can use for sandpaper incidentally. Years ago, they used to rub sandpaper on it. Off we go. You think actually that the flame is the hottest part of the fire, but it's not. The hottest part of the fire is that white ash down there. And as you can see there, it's absolutely bubbling. It's so hot. I'm tempted to turn it over, but it's obviously cooking. Then give it another couple of minutes. It takes maybe 
five, ten minutes, that's all it takes for the fish that size to cook all the way through. Now you've probably seen the nice little seat I got down here, square one. But if it gets cold, look, you can do this, you can warm these up. Just put them on the edge of the fire like this. That stone will absorb heat like you wouldn't believe. As you can see it's burning away here, these will all be hot. I've still got my bit of skin drying out there. Let that warm up and then you can put it back on here. And you'll find it can stay toasty warm for half an hour. Stone absorbs that heat. A cold freezing night on the beach. Man, it's got me out of trouble a lot of time. I put it on a stone because when you unwrap it, it gets very hot. As you can see there, done to perfection, still steaming. If you put it on the stone, you don't get your fingers burned. And that's just straight off. You can eat this. I'm going to try it with my fingers. Ow! Oh. Now, the bull husk, the larger species of these in Britain, is sold in the fish and chip shops as husk. And I think sometimes dogfish is too. But as you can see there, Absolutely done to perfection. Let me try and get the bone out. It's really, and our dog, our Jack Russell, used to love the actual bone, the cartilage. Mm. Straight protein. Now you've seen how to skin and cook a dogfish. There's only one other thing you need to do. That's watch the totally awesome fishing show, because that's the one that will tell you how to catch the dogfish. Thanks for watching. I'm going to crack on with this before it gets cold. A pleasure not to have bones. Mm. Love it. You know what it tastes of? Lugworm or mackerel because I didn't wash my fingers.